welcome back to Starfarers of Catan, the Starfarers of Catan, actually. Uh, we're about to begin here, part one, and so uh, I've decided that I'm going to be going first. So I'm green, and here's my one ship that's out on the board, and there are a total of three of these, and they have different bumps on the end of them. Um, there's three, two, and one, and when you have an encounter, the lowest uh, number ship is the one that has the encounter, uh, if it affects the ship. So uh, I only have one ship, so if I have an encounter, of course, it will be the one ship that's out. Lowest number of bumps. But anyway, I thought I would show you the resources I gathered for my three random cards uh, that you start with. So I got a trade goods, a food, and an ore. And so the first thing we do on a player's turn is we roll for resource production, and this is for all players. So I'm going to be rolling. I roll the two dice. And I roll a 7. Okay, well that brings us right into what do you do when you roll a 7. Because as you know, when you're playing Catan, and you roll a 7, the Baron comes out. Well, what you do in this instance when you roll a 7 uh, is nobody gets resources, obviously. And I, as the, uh, I guess, Baron here, or Pirate, get to steal one resource from another player, randomly. Uh, and so I'm going to steal one of the Talosian's three resources, so I will just steal that one. <laughs> Alright, and what do I steal? Ooh, I steal an ore. So now I have two ore of food and a trade goods. Um, and so we go on to the next step. And the next step is take a resource card from the reserve pile if you have less than nine victory points. Well, we're playing the... Uh, accelerated rules a bit so I'm gonna take two cards because I have less than six and so I get a carbon and a fuel uh, and so I have an awful lot of uh, resources now I actually if I look at them here I have uh, trade goods food two ore, a carbon and a fuel so next up uh, is the trading and building phase so I can trade a card with another player uh, if they want to make a trade and only with me because it's my turn or I can build something uh, so I'm just gonna review what I can build here uh, and I guess if we want to look quickly here uh, we can see what we can build we can build trade ships colony ships spaceports freight rings boosters and cannons and of course the costs are here so let me think about it I'll be right back and we'll see if we're going to trade with another player or possibly build something all right, and so I've thought about it a bit, and I'm willing to trade one trade good uh, for a fuel. So if Talos or Craig the Klingon want to give me a fuel, I will give them a trade good. And they say, forget it. <clears throat> All right. Uh, but what I will do is I will take the two ore that I have, and I will turn that uh, into one of these um, freight rings and attach it to my ship. So let's go ahead and do that. So now I have one freight ring, which means I can uh, build one trade center uh, on, a, on an alien uh, area. But of course I need a trade ship, and I'm unable to build that now. Uh, so the resources I'm going to have left are, whoops, as I drop them. Uh, resources I have left is a trade good, a fuel, carbon, and a food. So I'm just going to hang on to those for my next turn. Uh, maybe there'll be some trading on Craig's or um, Talos' turn. Uh, and now that that is over, uh, we are into determine your base speed of your ship. So I have to roll my ship, and I see what I get. And I actually get a yellow uh, and a blue. So I'm not going to have an encounter, uh, but if we look at the yellow and blue, so yellow and blue adds up to be three, which means all of my spaceships, of course I only have one, can move three spaces. And so I will do that. I will move this one one, two, and three. So I move it there. Um, and I should mention you can move through other spaces, other ships, and what have you. But you can never, of course, end your space in the same location as another uh, colony or transport ship or uh, colony ship. So there you have it. That's basically my turn over. Uh, up next, we're going to have Craig. All right, so it is Craig's turn, his red Klingon fleet, uh, ready to head out. Um, and he's not going to show us what resources he has, of course, but the first thing he does, of course, is he's going to roll for resource production for everybody. And he rolls a six. And so then we look at the planets that have a six on them. 
Uh, there are two of them. There's one right here, and there's one right here. So if we look at this, this is a food producing planet. Yellow and green are both going to get a food, so that's good for me. Uh, and if we look here, there is no blue player, but the Klingons are going to get a fuel. So I'm just going to go ahead and distribute that, and we're going to come back and... Uh, Oh yes, and the Klingon player, uh, Craig, is going to get two extra resources as well, because he only has four points. So let me get the cards uh, sorted out for the players, and we'll be right back. All right, well, Craig wants to trade um, a fuel for an ore. Uh, Talus has said no, and I don't have any ore, so that's not going to happen. And uh, so there's going to be no trading going on at all. So instead, uh, Craig then is going to say, all right, He's going to cash in two fuel, uh, which he has, and he's going to buy a booster, which I will not snap onto the ship because it will break it. But he now has uh, plus one to his speed. And uh, so we've done all of the uh, trading and building for Craig. And so now it's time for him to uh, go ahead and uh, shake his ship. And we're going to see just how far or he's going to get or whether he has an encounter. So... Wow, no encounters. He has a red and a yellow. So let's take a look at red and yellow and see where he can go. Wow, that's uh, red is three, yellow is two. He can move five, and he has the booster that he just bought, so he can move six spaces, and he's right here. So, yep, yeah, he is going to motor. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So he can pass through my ship. Now what he gets to do right now is he gets to look at these tokens uh, and he can decide if he wants to build a colony there uh, or what. Uh, he doesn't have to, but it's the start of his next turn. If he does not build a colony here, he has to move the ship out of that space. Uh, he cannot remain there, so he can't blockade uh, sections of the board. But he's not going to build a colony there, uh, which I find highly suspicious. Um, and so that basically is going to end Craig's turn. Uh, he's got that booster and he rolled really good for speed, so he just blew right by me, uh, but that's okay. Uh, up next, Talos, who has one ship here. Uh, and so let me just uh, rearrange things and we're gonna get to Talos. All right, Talos' turn. Of course, first thing we do, roll for resources. He also rolls a six. Well, we just had a six, uh, which means I am going to get a food and so is Talos. And once again, Craig is going to get another fuel. Uh, so we just take that out of the pile. So I'm getting a food. Talos gets a food. Um, and Craig is going to get a fuel because a six has come up. All right. Uh, Talos also gets two extra resources because he only has, he has less than six points. He gets another couple resources. And now he needs to decide... Uh, if he wants to try trading with us or whether he's going to build something and so we'll be right back once he figures that out it's not right talos yeah he's thinking he's telling me he's thinking all right we'll be right back all right so talos is willing to give up a fuel uh if someone will give him a carbon and i am not willing to do that and um craig is also not willing to do it so uh, Talos says, all right then, be that way. Uh, and he's going to take, he has three food. Now you can cash in any three uh, similar resources for any one other resource. So he's going to cash in three uh, food and he's going to get a fuel. And you'll see why in a second. Uh, because now in his hand he has two carbon and two fuel. So he's going to buy himself a cannon with the two carbon and with the two fuel that's going to buy him a booster. Again, if we look at the purchasing here, so uh, boosters cost two fuel and cannons cost two carbon. So that is what he is doing. So he gets a booster and a cannon. So again, uh, his yellow ship here, we're not going to try snapping the booster in because it will snap the plastic. However, we can put the cannon in here and away we go. His ship now has a cannon on it and a booster. All right. Next up, he's going to determine his base speed. So he's going to give his uh, ship a shake. See what he gets. Ooh, well, this time he has the black ball. So he is, in fact, going to have an encounter. So what we do is we take the top 
encounter card off the deck and we're going to flip it over but I'm going to have to conceal some of it uh, because he's going to have to make some decisions based on what happens. So let me just figure that out and we'll be right back. All right, so the first part of the card says, uh, a space pirate attacks you, do you flee? And the Talosian who just bought himself a first cannon says, uh, no, he doesn't. And so with the no, we have to follow the no uh, arrow down the path. And we can see here it says, you must fight. The player to your right takes on the role of the pirate. You must each roll your mothership and add your cannons. Uh, is the other player stronger? So there's going to be a fight. And the player to uh, Talos's right is Crag. Uh, so Talos, yellow ship, is going to roll here. Uh, he ends up getting, wow, a very good roll. An unbeatable roll, actually, because he has a red and a yellow, which is five. And he has a cannon, total of six. Crag's going to give it a try, though. And, of course, he gets a yellow, which is just two and no cannons. So the answer to the question of, uh, is the other player stronger? Uh, the answer is no. Talos blew the pirates away. Uh, and so we go down the chain here. Uh, is the other player stronger? No. So it's a victory. And the pirates' cargo is yours. You receive two ore resources and one fame ring. Wow. What a major score. Uh, so Talos going to get two ore resources as well as a fame ring for taking out those pirates. So the fame ring now uh, gets added to his ship. I think you can have a total of 11, and that's it. So he has two. Now every pair of fame rings is equal to one victory point. So if we go way up here, which of course will not be able to be seen because it's so far away, Talos goes from four points to five and takes the lead. Well... That's going to be it for the first episode, part one. Uh, everyone has had a turn. Uh, oh, and yes, <laughs> I almost forgot. Uh, he does get to move his ship now. Uh, and what you do when you get a black ball is you get to move three plus any other effects, uh, alien card effects or boosters. So he gets to move his ship four spaces. Almost forgot about that. So he's going to go one, two, three, and he's going to go four to there. Now we're completely done after his encounter. Uh, so there you go. That is uh, the first part of the Starfarers of Catan. Uh, we will continue on, of course, um, going through the turns until one player reaches 12 points, which is a bit of a truncated game. But like I said, this game can stretch on for quite a long time. Uh, so I'm just going to run it to 12 points, not the usual 15. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Join me next time for part two of the Starfarers of Catan. It's me versus Talos the Talosian uh, and Crag the Klingon. All right, thanks for watching. Join me next time.